Yo, Adam Saxton here with Guy in a Cube, and today I want to talk about dates and more specifically getting a date table inside of our Power BI desktop model. That's coming up. So I mentioned dates and date tables inside of our Power BI desktop model, and I like dates. Dates are cool. And specifically, working with dates can sometimes be a challenge. And what I wanna do is walk through how you can actually get to a point where you've got dates working for you the way that you want them to. We're talking about Power BI. All right, what better way to talk about and show you a date than, you guessed it, let's head over to my computer. All right, so I've got a model here that's got some movie information in it, and one of the fields on the movie side is release date. And so if I just drag release date to the canvas, you'll see here that I've automatically got a hierarchy of year, quarter, month, and day. And that's done automatically. I don't have a date table. All I did was I have a field in my table that is a date type. When we go to add some information here, so I'll just drag movie title to value, it'll do a count of, and then I can drill down into this automatically and I can get quarter, I can get months, and then I can get the individual day. So that's great, that's awesome, but I'm limited to only year, quarter, month, and day. What if I want to do something different? What if I want to slice calendar year or look at fiscal year? And then what if I need other columns that are part of that, that aren't necessarily part of the automatic date table that's here? Another issue that we have is that it's going to create, it creates a hidden table underneath in the model for that actual hierarchy. And it does that for every date field in my model. So across all tables. And so if there's a date field anywhere in the model, it gets its own hidden table under the hoods, which could potentially bloat your model. More than likely your model does not look like mine where I've got four tables. Yours probably has a lot more, right? Okay. So what can we do? First off, you could end up in your actual data warehouse or your backend. You could already have a date table populated that you can then pull into your model and use that accordingly. It's perfectly fine to do that. A lot of systems already have that in place. You could probably just pull from that. I know on the support side with some data that I was using, they already had a date table populated that aligned to Microsoft's fiscal calendar. And so I was able to just populate that and use it. Not a big deal. All right, but what if you don't have access to that or if maybe you want something that doesn't align to what may be in your data warehouse? Maybe you want something different. DAX comes to the rescue and there are two DAX functions that you can use to create date tables inside of your model. And so let's take a look at that. All right, so let's get rid of that. And then first I wanna do is I'm gonna go over to my modeling area and I'm gonna say new table. And this is where we're going to write some hard DAX. Are you ready? Hard DAX. Here we go. All right. I'm going to call it dates. And we're going to use calendar auto. Yeah, if I get the parentheses right. All right. And of note, this takes a parameter. It's an optional parameter for fiscal year and month. And so you can define when is the end month of my year from a fiscal period. So for Microsoft, for example, June is the end month. So at the at July 1st, we start a new fiscal year. Okay. So for this perspective, I'm going to go and put in June as my end month to mimic Microsoft's because I'm going to explain to you what this is going to do. So let me go ahead and hit enter here. And we're then gonna see a date table over on the right in my model. And it's got a single field here called date. And if I drag that to my canvas, you'll see that it did the same thing. There's a hidden field under, or there's a hidden table underneath this. That's okay, we're gonna get rid of that in a second. Bear with me. Now, uh, let's switch over to our data perspective here. We're going to go to our dates table and you're going to see that we've got dates all the way from July 1st of 1903. And you're going to see here that the last date I have in here is June 30th of 2017. So what calendar auto does is it says, all right, what's the complete date range in my model? And so it's going to start in this case, it was 1903 and it's going to go all the way till the end date in your model, and then it's gonna populate whatever remains to that end fiscal month. So in my case, I put June, and so it goes to the end of June. And so it's gonna populate any date. So if my last date in my model, say, was January 5th 
of 2017, then it's gonna populate up to June of that year, 2017. And then whenever you refresh the model, it's gonna recalculate that table. This is a calculated table inside of DAX, and it's gonna re look at all the dates in your model and push that out again if it needs to be pushed out. That's how calendar auto works. What if I have an exact time frame that I know I need to populate? Maybe it's just the last two years. So maybe January of 2015 or January of 2016 all the way to the end of 2018. I can use the calendar function instead of calendar auto and I can specify the dates specifically that we want to populate. So auto is going to figure out everything in your model and then populate up till the end of whatever month you decide to declare whereas calendar lets you specifically do a start and end date on it. So those two functions give you a table that has a date column inside of it. So that's awesome, but Adam, Adam, it doesn't have the other fields that I need. What about quarter, what about month, what about all those things? Hang on, hang on, we'll get there. All right, so we've got our dates, right? And we'll go back up to the top here. Now what we can do is say we want the what the month is. So we can do a new column and we can say month number equals month on the date and boom, there's our month number. Now we can add another column and we can say month equals, and this will be format value is going to be dates. And then the format is gonna be our month name itself. And then we'll end parentheses on that. And so this is the abbreviated version. If you want the full version, we can do four Ms and then you'll have the full month name, not a big deal. And you can continue to populate columns based on that if you wanna do it by hand. But wait, there's more. So Marco Russo over at sqlbi.com did a blog post, I think it was July of 2017. And in that blog post, he had explained the use of using generate instead of add columns to basically create your date table for you. So the, the difference here is that in this case of what I showed you, I used calendar auto, and then I individually manually added those extra columns and typed in the DAX for them. It's kind of a pain. What I'm doing is still using calendar auto. In his case, he was using the, the calendar, the base calendar one and specifying the dates. But in my case, I'm using calendar auto. So I can use generate with calendar auto and automatically specify all the DAX statements for the columns that I want and just use a single DAX statement for that and not have to manually add those in. So the nice thing here is if you ever wanna reuse it, you've just got one statement and you can plop into your models that you create over time instead of having to manually add these one by one. So let's look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna go and delete my date table. So let's go ahead and delete that. Yep. All right, so we're gonna create our new table and I will paste in our command. So what we're doing here is we've got our base calendar using calendar auto. This is the same command we had before, so calendar auto and June is our end month. Then we've got our generate command, which we're using the base calendar, and then we are going to create some variables here for our values, and then we're going to populate rows based on the items that we want. So these are gonna be the columns that we want for each row. So let's go ahead and hit enter, and we'll see this generate. And boom, there we go. So we got date, we got day, we got year, month, number, month, and then year, month. That's cool. And you can expand on this. You can add other columns that you want. You can do calendar year and fiscal year if you want. You can do that all within the same statement. That's great. And so now we still have this problem of this hidden table underneath. And so what we can do here, this is where relationships come in. You know, if you're gonna date, you need relationships. So let's go and add a relationship in here. So we want to make a relationship from our, let's move our date table over here so we can see it. And we want our release date. All right, so we've got our release date in our movies table. So let's make a relationship here with our date column. And boom, we've got a one to many relationship here. And if we come back, all right, so now when we drag our release date to our canvas, we're just gonna see the date, right? There's no auto hierarchy. There's no, not what we had before. So it got rid of that internal table for us. All right, that's cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take month from our dates table. Let's bring that up here. We're gonna make a bar chart. And then I'm going to add movie title in here, what we had before, which is just gonna do a count. And then we'll see 
the items actually off of that relationship at that point. And I can make my own hierarchy if I want. I can do year, then I can do month. I can do all of that stuff inside of the table. You'll also notice it's not sorted right. You can add a sort by column in there as well to get it working the way that you need. So that's cool, right? You can add your own date table easily through the use of DAX functions. All right, what questions do you have for me on date tables and whatnot? You can leave that down below. I know one question you're gonna have based on the new release of Power BI Desktop. Patrick's got a video for you next talking about that, so stay tuned. But what else do you have? Let us know down in the comments below and we will answer as best we can. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.